So first of all, uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity here to provide uh, a talk. Um, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about custom bindings um, using JSX graph and stack and the interplay between JSX graph and stack and how you can make the graph become a part of a stack question. And the idea for this basically um, came from uh, an applet where we wanted to implement a drag and drop functionality. And therefore we had to do a custom data binding. And so I used this example uh, to provide a talk. And first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about um, the, the possibilities behind that. So um, let's start with uh, the outline. So uh, first of all, I want to talk a bit about what, what are bindings for JSX graph in stack. Then um, I want to look at a few binding options that uh, stack provides so that we can um, use these uh, things in JSX graph. Then um, briefly the benefits and, and drawbacks and also use cases when, when to um, use custom bindings. And then um, I want to show the example, the JSX graph applet, where we can use drag and drop functionality. And um, I'm also going to um, show the code and uh, the few important steps uh, we uh, implemented in the code in order to make this drag and drop um, work. All right, so um, what are bindings in stack um, for, for JSX graph? So basically, data bindings uh, are used to, to store the state of a graph or make the, the graph part of a question. So basically, um, it's possible to interact with the graph, and um, your interaction in some form will be stored in an input. And then after students submit the question, uh, they can get feedback based on um, the interaction with uh, the JSX graph. So from a technical um, side, uh, if we use the JSX graph within the stack, the JSX graph block, um, we can use data bindings um, like, um, like uh, you see here. So uh, basically in, there's an option where you can provide an input reference and you have to name it something. So basically it's here, for example, answer one ref. And then this uh, answer one ref will become a variable inside your JSX graph code from which you can then access the answer one input in your stack question. Exactly. And then thanks to the bindings, the graph can uh, become a part of the stack question and is more um, involved in the, in the question. It is an active part of it. So, uh, what this would look like, um, I have provided here a little um, video from a from a um, stack question where students are asked to um, drag a parabola to a certain position that it matches the equation. And for demo purposes, I um, showed the the input above this applet. So whenever I um, drag around here, the input gets updated. But of course, um, this uh, should not be visible for students. This is only demo purpose here. Um, and this is kind of the way that um, the binding works. So then um, I recently um, looked up the, the, the stack uh, documentation and um, Try to identify uh, the possible um, binding functions because stack already has some ready-made functions um, to ease the use of data binding in graphs so um, that you don't have to put much uh, code into the applet yourself so you can also um, already use those functions and provide some some options um, so basically there's a, a namespace called stack jxg that you can um, use for that. And then there are different uh, functions where you can bind, for example, sliders and points. And um, new in, in stack 4.4 also, I found out, um, you can um, now also um, 
make a binding um, with a list of points. So if you have, for example, some kind of polygon uh, where you want to um, store the information about each uh, point that you use to create it, um, you can now also use the bind list of uh, function. And then there are some, yeah, some uh, additional helper functions that you can define a group, for example. So a list of elements is then considered a group. And when we move one element, all are considered to be moved. Um, but uh, on the right hand side, um, what is uh, interesting here, so I provided a little template or skeleton, so to say, how a uh, binding would look like. So we already saw on the um, previous slide, um, the, the JSX graph block here, where you uh, provide um, a, a string that um, is then used as a variable to store the input reference. And then you can, for example, here uh, define some default coordinates and then later on create a point. And this point is then, um, is then um, uses those coordinates. Um, and then we call this binding function, where you basically provide the, the variable um, which links to the input and the point. And after that, when you drag the point around, um, the, the input is automatically updated with the point coordinates. And this uh, is a two-way binding. So basically, if you um, would update the input, then also the point would get updated. So here. Uh, it's important it's the name of the input field, this is then the name of the input variable inside the text we will get. And here we divide this variable into the binding function, and then everything works. Um, yeah, so those are the binding functions. But sometimes um, when we develop an applet, um, we have some additional requests where we um, can't use those binding functions or maybe have to combine uh, multiple uh, functions. And whenever this occurs, um, we in our project use uh, a custom binding. And there's a, a good overview also on the um, spec assessment um, docs here. So I'll put the link in here um, where it's explained how um, the, the steps are done to achieve such custom bindings. But basically, it's um, three steps. So first, you have to uh, load the existing state into the input um, or in it with a default value. So for example, here, um, I have point coordinates. And then if the value of the input um, is not empty, um, then I um, overwrite this default coordinates with the ones that are in the input. So that is always uh, up to date. And then the second step is to create some JSX graph elements. And the simplest example, of course, is always a point, but uh, with custom bindings, it could be much more. Um, so we create this element and uh, provide it the, the coordinates that um, come from the input. And then the most important step is step three. Um, so basically, when you interact with the board, this could be just the board update event, or here in the example, when you break the point, so a break event, you have to um, write the coordinates of the point or any information back into the input. And then um, this is done if, uh, here with the input.value and JSON Stringify, where you write the input in Stringify and write it back to the, to the um, HTML input then. And afterwards, you also have to dispatch uh, an event so that the stack.js system that is used since the newest stack version also uh, gets informed about this change. And then the, the graph state um, is updated. So those are the, the two steps. Uh, this is a really, really easy example and uh, could, of course, here uh, be implemented with the binding function, but this is what it would look like if you would um, do a custom data binding. Yeah, and then um, a few weeks um, before the conference, when I was uh, finishing here this, this talk, I um, or at our university, we updated our Moodle and 
now use, um, I think it's stack four for bind. Um, and then I discovered there's also um, a new custom bind function. Um, so I had to also put a slide in here um, and talk a little bit about it because this is um, now the, the, the new way or the, the recommended way um, to, to use data bindings in stack. And um, I'm just briefly going to explain uh, a little bit about this, this function here. So basically, it works um, kind of similar to the other ones. So you have to provide the reference um, to the answer, the input variable, and then you have the serializer and the serializer. And basically, the serializer function is just the code um, that is called when you want to write to the input, and the deserializer is when you want to read from the from the input and for example, um, move objects or do something. And then um, afterwards, we also have to provide the points that are then stored um, so that um, uh, the custom binding function knows which trace extra elements it should track and always call and update when they are moved. So for example, here I have a point and whenever I would move this point now, then um, this uh, serializer function would get called and would write the, the x coordinate of this point to my input. And basically, I could do some really cool stuff here. So it doesn't have to be a coordinate. I could, I could really um, write any any value here to my input. And therefore, um, I can really do custom binding. And this is um, now much more easier than um, I showed uh, earlier here, this uh, takes um, a lot more steps and we have to do a, a break event and uh, the writing of the data to the input all manually. And here it's uh, a new function and it's really cool. Um, yeah. So now the benefits, drawbacks, and use cases. And um, afterwards, it will be a little bit more practical. Um, so uh, when we're going to look at at the applet, but uh, I briefly want to mention um, some, some of the benefits. So the, the custom data bindings uh, allow for more control over, over the input and state of uh, um, the data binding uh, in graphs, because now it's not just a point uh, or um, a slider that you can bind, but you can do uh, something like a list of Boolean values, for example. So um, you have more possibilities and can do some some more things maybe um, you couldn't do with uh, the binding functions provided by stack. And uh, I also want to mention that now with the new custom bind function, of course, custom bindings are a lot easier now uh, to do. Unfortunately, I didn't know about this function uh, when I submitted my my uh, abstract. Then <laughs> maybe. Um, I would have changed a little bit, but now I took this as an opportunity to show kind of the old way how a custom data binding is done and um, the, uh, also look a little bit at the new way how it could be done. But of course, both ways are constructed. Yeah, and the drawbacks, of course, is it's more code to write and the code of the applet then becomes, of course, more complex and a little bit less easy to understand if you're not. Um, too familiar with um, data binding and the integration of uh, JSX graph applets in, in, in stack. Yeah, so basically, come to a conclusion um, for custom bindings, you can develop stack questions that are really tightly coupled to the applets in terms of um, maintaining or preserving the graph state. And also using the graph as question input. So this is really the, the most important thing. The graph is part of the question and can be um, integrated in the in the assessment. Yeah, so um I hope this was not too much of theory, but I thought uh, I wanted to give a little bit of an overview of what's uh, possible and how you can do certain things regarding data binding. And now um I want to talk a little bit about the use case that uh, inspired me here or um, was the, the basis for this talk. So um, we, uh, at our project, Ideal, um, at our university, we basically um, um, develop online courses 
um, on different uh, STEM topics, mainly here um, in the field of mathematics for, for students. And last year, for example, at uh, the Chase Xcraft conference, my, my colleagues, uh, Stefan Bach and Johannes Knaut, gave a talk uh, where they um, explained a little bit about um, our learning modules on complex numbers. And now this year, we're developing a learning module um, on uh, linear algebra. And then I picked here a question out of this learning module. Um, now the, the idea from this came uh, from, a, from a script we had from our um, professor. And we then um, tried to, to, um, to um, create a dynamic applet and question based on this um, script. And then this idea of a drag and drop applet uh, was born. Um, so with the help of the, the custom bindings, we can implement this uh, functionality. And in the example question you see here, um, it's the task for the student is basically to just move those um, three labels on the correct positions. So it's not uh, not a, a very difficult question, but um, we thought that it would be uh, beneficial for the students that they not only have um, just uh, an image where it said, okay, so this is the vector here is called like this and uh, and so on, but they have to really uh, become uh, active and do a little bit um, of the work to in order uh, get uh, also get feedback. And um, then it's not only text-based learning, but also um, interactive learning. So um, yeah, and then the question does uh, store the, the label positioning and can also give them feedback on the students if they drag the label to the correct position. And um, so the, this drag and drop seal um, is implemented using the magnetized points example from Chase XGraph. Um, so this is basically the, the way that um, we could um, implement it, but I will show it later then uh, in, the, in the demo of this question. So first of all, um, when we develop this question, um, we um, have to ask questions about um, what things the, the applet should uh, remember. What what do we need to store as a state of um, our chase extra applet? And uh, in this example, we have to um, remember the position of the of the labels, of course. Um, so that when the page is reloaded, um, or after the student uh, submitted this task, this question, um, they still are on the same position he, he dragged them to and not always default to their starting uh, position. And uh, therefore, we um, use an input with a nested list with the, the coordinates of those labels. And then um, for, we also use um, a list of Boolean values to store information about if the label is uh, in the correct position. So it's basically those two inputs that we, we use for the data binding then would more or less look like this. Um, and then, okay, what bindings can we use for this? So for the, for the first one, for the label positions, um, we can use um, one of the um, function stack provides here, so the bind list um, method. So then it's uh, really easy and we do not need a custom binding. But then um, for our Boolean values, uh, where we want to store the info about the three labels being on the correct position, we um, use a custom binding for that. Yeah, so the label coordinates are only used for, for persisting the graph state and for the assessment part of the question, um, we use the Boolean values, um, but checking also inside the question here are these to give feedback to the students if the labels were dragged to the correct position. And then we have a variable in Maxima where we go through the list and see, okay, are uh, all three values true? And then we know, okay, the student um, dragged the labels to the correct position. So I have to note here maybe that, uh, of course, um, we could also do this without this uh, second input and only the first one. But uh, then you have to write a little bit more code in Maxima to check if the positions match the positions you defined. And um, with this approach, we uh, chose 
we can already check if the labels are in the correct position inside the applet. Yeah. So then, um, what does this question look like when a student would um, here try to check it? I drag the labels. I showed it here. So the labels uh, can be dragged to the different um, rock zones, so to say. And then whenever um, you're near this zone, um, it snaps right into it. And after you submit it and um, you can't drag them anymore, and you also get um, visual feedback if the labels are in the correct position. And now, um, yeah, if you see here, if you can then really put the drag and drop functionality within JSX one. Checking, see, okay, um, to get feedback, uh, all three. Uh, labels have been positioned correctly and uh, the check marks. Okay, um, so that's basically what I wanted to talk about. And now um, the last part of my talk uh, is then going over the code to make this a little bit more practical and show uh, how we in detail here uh, implemented this uh, data binding for this um, for this question. Um, and therefore, I'm going to open my Visual Studio code here where we um, edit our question. And I also have this question here in, in preview mode in Visual Studio. So basically, this is the, the IDE we use for developing those applets. And um, here on the top, we include trace extract and the math checks from our Moodle and also some styles from our Moodle so that it more or less looks like um, uh, here the, the Moodle environment um, so that we can um, do much of the development work already inside VS Code and don't have to um, code too much in the, in the um, editor inside spec. Yeah, but um, now let's, um, let's look at the way this is then implemented. So um, here we have just basically some options where we define um, some, some of the, the stylings we want. And um, before we initialize our board here, um, we provide um, here two variables uh, that link to, uh, to the inputs. And we do not have the stack inputs here. Um, available, of course, but we can simulate it by just putting uh, inputs with the corresponding uh, corresponding IDs that we then will later use for our uh, inputs in stack here. And um, then we can uh, get those two inputs by ID here and have basically the, the same um, behavior like we would then later on have in, in stack. And and for the for the binding here, so the um, the binding here, I have um, two variables, and I just look if the the value of this input is is empty, and um, when it's not empty, then I'm gonna gonna um, pass whatever is in this input and store it here in this variable, so that we have uh, access to this variable. This is uh, step one. And then later on, after we uh, defined our board uh, with the coordinates and um, some ticks, we provide some elements here, the vectors for our applet. Um, then here, the, 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 the drop uh, areas for our applet. Um, so these are basically um, points that have a certain CSS style to them that they look um, like uh, you can drop something in here. And afterwards, uh, you can find the, the labels. Those are just uh, text elements. And here we can see, um, I just look here at the text positions. So the, um, and this is here, this variable. And if I have a value from my input, then uh, the length here is, of course, um, greater than one. and um, I position the labels here 
in the position provided. And um, if it's not the case, so we do not have any input in here, um, it defaults to um, yeah the starting value of this um, of this label. And this is done for all three uh, text labels. And then um, to enable this drag and drop here, this has nothing to do with the binding, but maybe also uh, interesting. The three text labels here, um, I define uh, attractors for them so that for each label then could be dragged in, in every uh, drop area that we define. So this uh, enable, enables here drag and drop functionality. And behind this drag and drop, it's basically just points um, with attractors and um, much like in the magnetized point example from JSX Um Okay. And then lastly here, the stack input binding and event listeners in this um, part of our code, it's step three, so to say. So for each of the, of the text elements, we create an event listener. So whenever this um, label is dragged, then we write back to the to the input. So basically that uh, whenever I interact with the labels, our inputs are also um, are also updated. And then um, how do we update those things? Um, for example, here for our um, first input, um, the, the Boolean values where we want to store the information about the labels being in the correct positions. We just uh, write back to this um, input the value here and um, make a string out of it. And I have to find a little helper function here to check if the text is in the correct area. And then we get those those values and write it back here to, uh, to our input. And then uh, we do the same thing here. Mm -hmm. But um, here we um, provide the coordinates of the labels so that when we refresh the page, for example, the labels stay in the position um, that they were dragged to. So basically here we, we, we set the HTML inputs value. And then uh, since the, the new stack.js system, um, we also have to dispatch a change event. So because now uh, Chase extra runs inside an iframe and then Basically, the code inside this iframe doesn't really know um, anything about the parent document and can't uh, access it uh, like it's used to. So um, in order for this to um, work, we have to dispatch a change event and then the stack.js system gets informed that um, we want to uh, change something and handles um, this stuff for us and messages the, the parent document. And then this um, this works. And then lastly, um, whenever we, we break, uh, there's a function that removes those feedback symbols because a full feature in this um, in this um, question is that um, when I break the, the labels in the positions, um, being it, uh, so it can be uh, the correct position or maybe the wrong position, we get some little feedback icons there. And uh, those feedback icons um, are created here. So basically, um, we have a function that here uh, creates uh, some feedback icons that are just like the, the icons here in, in the stack. And they are then shown if the, the label is in the correct position, of course. And if not, uh, then uh, the wrong icon is, uh, or the wrong feedback symbol is, uh, is shown. Um, yeah. So basically here we call a function providing it the, the, the text and our anticipated the label and this block area. And then inside here, um, we just uh, we just check if, uh, if it's correct or incorrect. Yeah, so this is basically the, the code behind this. Um, I hope uh, some of you um, Maybe learn something new about data binding, uh, and I hope it was not too uh, much uh, input, especially the first half here of this talk. Um, and I tried now with the example here to make it a little bit more practical. But of course, um, 
Uh, afterwards, if anybody has some uh, some questions, um, feel free to to ask and also to um, use then the the Moodle forum to to chat um, if anything um, is still um, missing here. <laughs>